you had obviously time missing last week. There was you had some health issues with going through the rest of the group as well this week? No, look, Ty, Ty was back on Monday at practice. So uh, it was it was like if we were lucky enough to have a later game last week, he would have been available to play. Uh, just us traveling over east earlier on, just it wasn't worth it. So he's had a good week. Um, yeah, so we're like Tasmania, they're playing well. They've, they're just a tough team to prepare for and play against. So. Uh, they got our full attention this week. But you had, like, we've seen different blokes throughout the holidays training by themselves. Yeah. It looked like there's been some guys isolated from, from the group. Have you had other players who have fallen ill this week, which has caused you some challenges in the group? Yeah, look, it all comes under the illness, loading, all of that type of stuff, especially, I guess, leading to the previous question about hitting the road through the Christmas period. So. Um, they wear those catapult devices, so we understand the workload, and we're trying to be mindful so we can avoid injury. So, have you had much of them t fully together then? Lord? Yeah, look, we've been we've been playing five on five the whole week. Uh, practice has been like good, uh, but we'll find out how we go tomorrow night. Is there anyone that might be playing tomorrow night? Not to my knowledge. You know. <laughs> <laughs> when you're away, I guess it's really important to cement that top, the push for the top four, and it starts on, on Friday against a pretty tough team. Are you, are you talking about that yet, where you really do have to get a run home now? What we talk about is playing to the best of our ability in every game. And if, if we do that, we'll, we'll finish on the ladder where we want to finish, because the way the league's going, if you start worrying about what other people's destiny and who you're playing and all of that, it's about us playing. And we've shown with, a, with the six game win streak, if we play good basketball, we're one of the better teams in the competition, but we need to find that consistency. So it's so hard to win six in a row, and mm -hmm. everyone says you, every win you have, you're closer to a loss. Right? Yep. When you reflected on the loss, did you see alarm bells from the, the, were building up to the game, or did you think the game itself just went awry? Yeah, look, they, they played very well. We didn't play great. Uh, the thing that I took from that game, if you look at our previous games, we were, we were lucky enough to finish quarters with good momentum in most of those games. Against Illawarra the other day, we couldn't gain any momentum leading into the quarter break, half time or three quarter. Um, they went into each of those breaks with momentum and uh, it's amazing what momentum can do for a team, no matter what the scoreboard says. So where did you identify that moment you were lacking that momentum? Oh, that's just something that I, I critique and take on board as a coach. That's something that I track and feel is important. So in that specific game, where did you said you weren't going into the, into the breaks with that momentum, mm -hmm. why not? Where was it falling apart? Well, you're just, you're just trying to close out a quarter with potentially you scoring the last basket or going on like a 5-0 run. Uh, but to their credit, you know, at the end of the first quarter, uh, they come down with four seconds on left in the quarter and, and made a desperation three. So they go into it with momentum when we've done a good job of chipping into a high teens uh, lead, you know. So we just couldn't as get any ascendancy with any real momentum. We did a great job of fighting back, which is encouraging, but we just couldn't go into any of those breaks with any true momentum. Milton Doyle will play out the turning back yep. to the funeral in America. Like, how challenging is he as a person to stop? Yeah, look, uh, he, he's one of the better performers in the NBL, but like we can't discredit the other guys on the floor, like Crawford's a handful, Will Magne's coming back to show why he's played time in the NBA. Uh, Jack McVeigh gets floated around as a first team all NBL guy. So uh, Anthony Drimmick's found a nice little role with Tasmania. So they, like they have a good team. Then I talk about Clint Steindl. So, yeah, Milton Doyle is, is a very good player and is a clutch performer in this league, but we cannot disrespect them as a team and the other personnel they have on their roster. What's the, what's the key to... You play them first down the season, they'll mm -hmm. obviously be very different to the Tassie. Yeah, yeah. Then. <laughs> what's the biggest thing that you look at when you're going in against Tassie? Yeah, look, uh, us being able to get great shots on offense. Now, we're not going to make all of our shots, but if we can take good shots and break down their defense a little bit, then we can apply the defensive pressure that we need to apply. Now, if they're cleaning the glass and pushing it with good pace, especially Crawford, he's really tough to keep in front. So um, 
like like most successful teams, if you can get a good balance between your offense and your defense, so we can play at the pace we want to. I always say against Tasmania, you got to go out and beat them because they're never going to beat themselves. So that's why the the pace and the rhythm of the game is very important. That's, how, that's been like the, the DNA, isn't it? Like yep. you, know, you know what you're going to get from Tasmania ever since like, into the competition. Correct. Been, is that what you admire about the way that they are? It, for sure, and like it's nearly like nine other coaches would say, or eight other coaches would say exactly the same thing in a press conference like this when you're getting ready for Tasmania. You need to be disciplined, and then you need to find your style to be able to capitalize, because if you just think you can go back and forth, and they thrive in that environment. Does that make it harder or easier to prepare for? Oh, you got to be on top of the scout for these guys because the minute uh, you don't give them the respect or you just relax a little bit, they, they will punish you. And what's that discipline going to look like for you on the court? Oh, like for us defensively, like their offense, like they're trying to, uh, they're, they're very fluid in their movement. So the minute we put two guys on a, on a cutter because they back cut, that's going to leave like a lethal shooter wide open. So us communicating and just uh, not, not putting two guys on the wrong one. Now, there's been a lot of talk around the refs this, this year and the, the change in what David Stephen said about the approach towards them. You were mic'd up and very, speaking very calmly and, and, and concisely to them but with a question the other day. Have you had to approach how you approach them any differently since that memo came out? You got a memo. No, that, that, that memo you guys came, we, we, we were told that the memo came out two weeks ago to the clubs that, oh. that you were all being told that the, the line was coming closer. Gotcha. Had, had you had to change the way yourself and, and the players would approach them, them at all? I have not addressed my team and I'm not changing my approach to the way that I coach to get the best out of my team and to win the game.